Hey, don't y'all be hating, man, because I know y'all saw me high step in that video. If you are on the your podcast channel, and you're not watching the video, you need to go make sure you get to our YouTube page and check out my high step <laughs> as a high school football coach. People are always talking about what I did in the National Championship game and doing those kind of things. But, brother, man, let me tell you something. Uh, I'm still a little agile. These hips feel, feel pretty good. I'm doing all that I can. All right. So make sure you get to uh, Teague's Take Podcast uh, on YouTube. Subscribe and like. Thank you all for joining in the show tonight. we got a very special edition uh, today. We're joining forces with the Bama Standard. Thank you to our friends of Teague's Take. Justin Riley, we appreciate you. Marvin Constant, Bo Scarborough. Stephen A. Smith. Uh, Stephen M. Comic, Smith. Uh, M. Smith, sorry. Uh, the comic Steve Brown. He's always doing the Serial Chronicles. If you're not watching him on Instagram, uh, they're absolutely hilarious. Um, so, you know, it's great to have in, everyone in here tonight about that. couple reminders also. Don't forget about the uh, George Teagan Friends. Uh, George Teagan Family Endowed Scholarship Fund at the University of Alabama. If anybody ever wants to give to that, we don't ask for very much on Teague's Take about it, but we do want you to support our scholarship fund. You can find us at uh, Teague's, the, the Teague Family Scholarship.com, Teague Family Scholarship.com, uh, if you want to give to help us support uh, someone who attends the University of Alabama. You can also visit teakstake.com. JT does a great job of putting his power pole up out there, which we'll talk about a little bit later. It's very interesting, but you can find all of our podcasts um, there as well. So first, I want to go ahead and bring in JT. He is the analytical one. He is our producer. He is the one that makes all this stuff happen. He rushed from place to place during the day. He's a coder. He's doing all kinds of things. Um, I'm going to say engineering. Right. Uh, I guess they're still considered engineering. Um, yep. Okay. Then he goes coach some high school football. Um, then he's driving an hour from the school there, uh, kissing his wife, kissing his kids, and being dedicated to, to making this show happen. So we do appreciate you for everything that you do, JT. Uh, and, but I'm excited about this guest that we got on tonight, JT. You know, He's a beast, man, a beast. Uh, when I tweeted about him, and I guess we can still, it just sounds weird saying when I X'd about him. So Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, about, I'm not on that train. It's still Twitter. You still tweet. I don't care what Elon says. <laughs> uh, that's right. So still tweeting about him, and all the comments came back about Fred Sanford and him just having a big one every time he scored a touchdown and, and doing his thing. Um, so it's absolutely amazing to be able to have this gentleman. He was the 1993 office of, well, uh, he's a Sugar Bowl MVP. He had, man, he was rushing. He was killing it. He took over the football game, showing out, shaking them legs, doing all this kind of stuff. Uh, he's doing big things in the community now, doing well with his kids, his family, and all this kind of stuff. He did. He's a Super Bowl champion. People forget that uh, he actually won a Super Bowl with the Dallas Cowboys because he was drafted in the fourth round um, to the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, played four or five years um, in the league as well. Um, we get to stay close, and he hasn't changed one bit. He's very fit. He does his stuff. Y'all welcome in Derek Lassick. My man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Boy, man, boy, you like you ain't got no uh, veneers, do you? What you, what you? Yeah, yeah, I got. I went to Columbia and got some veneers put in. You know. I, 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 <laughs> I, 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 no, no, that's all right. This, this thing is pearly white, baby. That's what I'm talking uh, about. Thank you, thank you. You know, what I'm saying? It's, uh, I, it's a lie. I always try to tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Them things looking good. They, uh, so we're glad to have you here. So during this show, we're going to talk a, a lot of different things. So make sure everybody knows what we're going to talk about, right? So the first thing we got to talk about some Michigan stuff, uh, them stealing some signals. We got to be able to talk about what bye weeks look like now that, uh, you know, Alabama is on the bye week. We need to talk just a tad bit about what's going to happen with LSU. Got to hit the Tennessee 
uh, football game as well. And then, um, yep, and then you got to make sure you stick stick around for the film session. We we, yep. we started doing film sessions at the end of the show, so uh, you don't want to miss it as we break down uh, two plays from the Tennessee game. That is the highlight. We definitely have to get to those plays because I'm very curious to hear what Lassick has to say about this running play, man. Um, but we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later because I'm very intrigued about this play that Tommy Reese put in and will it continue to work? There's a lot of different plays that's going on with that. But Lassick, why don't you tell us what you're up to first, man? What are you doing now? Uh, well, I'm here in, in, in the Atlanta metro area. I stay in a city called Smyrna. I'm working with a guy called Brian Willis, b w Constructions. Uh, he's kind of teaching me the, the ropes on how to build houses. So I built a, a house and sold it probably in the spring of this year. Uh, it was a, a, a very, very uh, big learning lesson. You know what I'm saying? I didn't make as much money as I thought I was going to make because of, you know, the cost of goods going up, cost of everything was going up, except, you know, we had to keep the house at a reasonable price. Uh, and then I work a lot with my son. You know, I, I have him in, uh, he's in Taekwondo, he's in boxing. During the summer, he I have, had him with a private coach. Uh, so now he's at a local gym. So he's been there for three weeks or he's gone there three times. So the first time the coach had him spar with someone, he, he hit the kid, gave him an uppercut, the kid, <laughs> kids start crying so you know oh, a, oh, hold on that don't sound like taekwondo man uppercut no, no, boxing. I yeah <laughs> but he goes to boxing on thursday so he caught the kid with an uppercut and the kids start crying the coach for he's like your son's not gonna start crying if i put him in the ring right i said yeah because he's never sparred in boxing he's only sparred in taekwondo so he hit the kid with an uppercut made him cry so today he boxed he had a kid to the uh midsection with the right hook, I mean, it, it sounded like a thud, poof. And the kid just bent over and started crying. <laughs> so then they put him in a ring with the kid who's been boxing for like five, six years. And he's also 11 years old, my son's seven. And my son went three rounds and held his own. And the coach was like, man, if you stick to box, he stick to boxing, this kid would be serious. I said, no, my son is not gonna box. I got him in there just so he can defend himself. And I know boxing's good for footwork. So when he plays basketball or any other sport, his, his footwork will be intact. And that's it. You know, I've been married now for nine years. Uh, next year will be 10 years, you know, and uh, that's about it. Uh, congratulations on that, brother. And, uh, Thanks. You know, getting that uh, mile marker, of being able to be married for 10 years. Make sure you get her something nice. I don't know what what the – I can't remember what 10 years is. Is that – You've been married. Or, I've been married 30 years. Yeah, I know. You've been mad so long, you don't remember what the 10 year was. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember what that is. Um, but there's something um, that you're supposed to be getting to her. So make sure you look that up because she will yeah. appreciate it. My, my, my wife likes trips. She likes to go on trips. Like we, on our eighth anniversary, I took her to Dubai. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So she likes trips. So she's like, oh, the mother stuff's okay. Just take me on vacations. <laughs> Well, I hadn't been there yet. All right. So let's, speaking of taking trips, let's take a trip up to the north, Michigan. And Jim Harbaugh, or I guess not Jim. What's his name? Uh, it's Jim. John is the one in, in Baltimore. Yeah. Jim Harbaugh seemed like he always caught up in something. Oh, he didn't yeah. really been caught about nothing, but he's always <laughs> caught up in something. Hey, George, you know he's old school. You know what I'm saying? What what was the saying back in the day? If you're not cheating, you're not competing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you ain't trying. You ain't trying. So, yeah. so this whole deal about him stealing signals, right? And so I, I'm going to start it with this because I want to hear what JT has to say first because this is what I say. When someone brought it to my attention, they want to know how I felt about Harbaugh stealing signals. And this is what I said. I said, you know what? I had JT as a high school coach go with me to a scrimmage. I don't even know if he remembers this. And he his job was really to look at those coaches and try to figure out whatever kind of clue he can get with hang signals and calls and things. Not nothing legal. We weren't videotaping. We're not doing that stuff. And it wasn't very much. It didn't take him very long to figure out, oh, I know what they're doing. This is the formations. This is the something 
Uh, you know, this is the play. It's hard once you even get the signals to be able to get it to the player, right? Um, but how – is this really something we need to be worrying about, JT, with these hand signals and then stealing them? The short answer that I had was no. When this when this first – when the headlines broke, the Michigan stealing signals, and I was like, okay, and, like – the opponents just need to be better at hiding their signals, changing their signals, making it harder to figure out. Um, because my first thought is something that we do all the time is we're standing on the sideline during the game and we're looking over there and we, we played a team this year that was holding up uh, holding up signs that had numbers on it. Well, all right, well, if they're going to hold up the sign and I can see it from the sideline and we figure out what it is, then that's that's a you problem. That's not a me problem. Then um, it went from, okay, it's not from film and it's not that they're figuring out during the game. They actually bought tickets and went to the game and were stealing signals that way, which, again, I was like, still sounds like a you problem, <laughs> not a me problem. But apparently that's against NCAA rules. So if it's against rules, I guess I just I don't agree with that rule. I do think the last part of that where they're filming the sideline at the game, I think that is a step too far. You can't do that. I think that's, that is unethical, but everything up to that point, I'm like, okay, so what? This is, this is why when you're watching games and you see Lane Kiffin on the sideline, they got three people following around with, two poles and a big tarp holding it up so that you can't see his signals. Cause th this is Michigan ain't the only team that's doing this. And, and I, I really think as much as in people who have watched our show for a while know that for whatever reason, I still don't even have a good reason, but for whatever reason, I can't stand Jim Harbaugh. He just, he annoys me. He rubs me the wrong way, but somebody's out to get this dude from by from him getting in trouble for buying a kid a cheeseburger to this signal stealing thing. The NCAA is out for him. They're trying to find anything they can to get rid of him. I, I'm not, I don't understand how Jim Harbaugh gets a three game suspension for buying a kid a cheeseburger in Tennessee is illegally paying players and doing shady deals and putting them on planes, handing cash out in McDonald's bags, and ain't nothing happened to them. So, look, man. That was a big old burger, though, JT. It had <laughs> lettuce and cheese and all this green stuff in it. Man, but anyway, Lassick, man, what do you – look, we've been around this. We know we're always trying to get a competitive edge, right? People are trying to figure out ways to win. One of them is trying to figure out how they can get signals. How many times have you heard of it in the NFL, too? People shooting video up there, got some scout or something shooting video. Is it something that's just it's just going to keep happening or, or, or what? How do you feel about this? Well, the solution is to allow the college players to have the microphones in their ear, like the pros. So then you take the signal still in a way. So it, it, even out the playing field, because if the defense knows it's a running play, they have a, a tremendous advantage. They still have to stop the run, but they have an advantage. If they know it's a passing play, they have the advantage. You know, they kind of know what we're doing offense. I'm an offensive player. So, you know, um, so if they just put the microphones in there, I think that'll, you know, take care of the whole problem. Speaking of which, as we had a comment saying, I bet communication helmets are coming soon. Uh, they are. They are going to be trialed in bowl games this season, um, not in the playoffs for all the other bowls that quote unquote do not matter. Um, they will allow um, NFL like communication in the headsets. I don't know what the rules are about it, but they've already, the NCAA said they're already going to, going to try and see, see what it's like. How hard, how hard could it be? They're doing it in the NFL. I mean, they have the same helmets, just, Use the same equipment that they're using. And, well, uh, I mean, and, and another thing from uh, me last year, maybe it was two years ago, um, doing research on headsets um, for sideline communication, even just for high school. Their coach com, which 
services NFL all the way down to Pee Wee, um, they sell in in helmet communication for high school right now. So it's not that hard. This is something that can be turned on probably tomorrow. No, and what you need to know is, as the athletic director, John Paul II High School, and JT is the defensive coordinator uh, for our football team at John Paul II High School. Uh, one of the things that I have been, that we are looking at now is, and we are going to do it, as a matter of fact, um, in baseball, in high school, they now allow communication from the dugout to the pitcher or, or the catcher. Is that the um, pitch com? Yeah, so that they can actually communicate that way. So they had already started huddle. Had already created this huddle sideline um, mm -hmm. deal. It's legal in a lot of states. It is illegal in Texas because we play NCAA rules, which is UIL rules essentially, um, where most people follow uh, NFHS. Um, rules for high school football in other states. Texas does not, so it is illegal for us to use it. So a lot of people are already using some type of sideline pictures and videos and things of that nature where we're not allowed to use it in Texas. Um, but I think it's all going to get here um, sooner or later. I don't, I don't know why the uh, NCAA doesn't allow it. Um, hey, that's a great question uh, for Derek Lassick. Does he age? Yeah, well, he might be on some. Uh, hey, well, they say black don't crack. No, uh, yeah, well, well, yeah, he dark skinned now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, hold on. I can get the lock, make the lock of black. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, his that. shirt is black. You know, <laughs> my mom, my mom and dad, they both age well. So you know, at least I have that going for me. But my body is, you know, I look good. But you can ask my wife. I, I spent the last month going to a chiropractor, going to an orthopedic surgeon, getting back injections. Man, it's just been a rough month, man. Once your back goes out, man. Hey, man. I'm, I'm laughing. I'm sorry. I'm laughing because Jeremy said you got that uh, Just For Men NIL deal. <laughs> That's uh, funny. Uh, yeah, you, you're getting clowned. Well, it's, it's a good kind of clowning in chat right now. <laughs> yeah, I got grades, but you know what I'm saying. I, I, I put a little something in there. <laughs> All right. So not as, crazy, not as white as you though, George. Oh man, you know, I stop I just uh it, I used to dye my hair a little bit. My my wife said I might need to do it a little bit now. I did talk to my sister in law. She's gonna start giving me some type of well, it's not gonna take it all away, but it's gonna take a little bit away. She's like, ah, right, you know, you just need to take a little bit away. So right, is it so? Oh well, hold so, on, what? hold on. We we got some uh there's some there's some information in here. Uh, Justin Riley says, don't forget, George and Derek, you are eligible for the Legends NIL deal. Fans can purchase your Alabama jerseys. I didn't know oh, this. Uh, so. well, I ain't forgot. I ain't forgot. Okay. I, I already got the uh, thing. I just ain't sent my contract in yet. <laughs> um, uh, I, I don't even know. They said they ain't really going to negotiate with us. They, they're just going to give us what they're going to give us. Um, but I think <laughs> mailbox money is better than anything. Yep. Right? Some money is better yeah, than no yeah. money. Yeah, you, I, you got something in you keep on erasing. You keep on erasing them dollar bills in a minute, yeah. man. You're doing that. that now. Well, you know. Yeah. You, you at least got to read the subject line. That's right. So if I don't reckon, move, let me move on to the next one, right? So we're talking about what a bye week looks like. We're saying bye mm -hmm. to a lot of things, right? So, um, and it could be different from a high school to college to pros. A lot of times you're looking back, a coach is looking back, doing some self-evaluation, some check-in, checking their tendencies, um, that kind of thing. You always, you know, there's a sour taste in your mouth when you lose going before it. So, you know, there's all there's all kind of things that you have to consider with the the bye week. So Alabama's on a bye week. Um, this one. They're getting ready to play LSU in, in a week. So what does this look like? Lastly, is there anything you can remember at all? about the bye week when we actually played and what you actually experienced? Man, you know, I always stayed in the training table, uh, T, you know that. So I was always in the training room. So, you know, I know I was beat up by the time we got um, our bye week. Uh, other than me being in the training room, I don't remember anything else, doing anything else. It wasn't like a vacation or time away from football. 
because you know we had to go to the training table to the uh, facilities at early in the morning before class to get treatment. In the afternoon, you couldn't miss treatment. I mean, they could have gave me an ice and stem unit, and I could have did it from my room. Because <laughs> I, I, I swear, you broke your arm, ice and stem. God bless Bill, Coach McDonald. <laughs> uh, hey, I, tr- treatment is a lot different nowadays. It's not just a, that's all man, me right. Now, was ice I, and the stem. I, I'm gonna get a little bit of off topic here because this wasn't this wasn't what we planned on. But since you know we're all unscripted and we just talk here, I went into the training room. The other day, so one of my one of my players was complaining about his shoulder, right? And I was asking him, I said, "Hey, is it is it up here on the top of your shoulder, or is it in here in the middle of your shoulder? Is it up here, you know, sprain joint in here? We might have a problem." He said, "It's in here." I said, "Well, you need to go. You need to go talk to the trainer." So next day, <clears throat> I go in and I ask her, "Hey, you know, how's his shoulder doing?" And she was like, "Well." We put on this thing that I never heard of, and then we put him in a game ready, and then we did this. And I was like, what are all these things you're talking about? I I, I know it's English, but these things that are going on, I, I didn't hear you say ice. I didn't hear you say stem. I didn't hear you say, like, KT tape or nothing like that. It was all foreign stuff that I've never heard of. Yeah, you actually right. It's different nowadays, and it's I don't know if it's any better or whatnot. You know, people are planning to go get cryotherapy. That's cold tub, but it ain't no ice and no water. It's just freezing you to death. Yeah, yeah. Three, I take the three minutes over that cold plunge, boy. Jeez, oh Man. boy, you, you you get that cold tub up to your neck? What'd you do? Or could, could you get the jewels down in there? Or y'all just went to y'all knees and just left it right right there, and that was it. <laughs> I used to put the footies on my toes because my toes would get frostbitten. I go in there with, I go in there with like some uh, some tights and some shorts to try to keep the the good fellas good. <laughs> Man, for whatever I reason, I couldn't. I used to do cold tubs every day after practice and every day after track practice in high school. But when I got to college, I don't know. The cold tubs was different. I couldn't. I, I couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> yeah, but did, did you have? I- a cold tub or was just cold water? No, it was ice in both of them. They they dump ice, put the water in there, and then they they in high school they had the little thing where it like circulate the water, you know, it was rotating. Yes. Yeah. And in college they just it was a trash can. Huh, jump in. It's like, no, I'm not I can't I can't do this. All right. So so just to wrap this up, yeah, y'all tell me what do y'all think Saban is doing? This week is it all LSU and going beyond getting your game plans ready, starting to see, you know, uh, potential opponents. Maybe I don't know, you know, um, or is it just self evaluation, figuring out what to do, how to get better, um, to progress forward for the rest of the year? JT, you go first. I, I think this is. Uh... And I think he said this before, but I think it's a self scouting week. <clears throat> this is the week where you get to kind of pause for a second. You look at the things that you feel like to this point of the season you should be doing correctly, and for whatever reason you're not, or you're not doing it to the best of your ability. And without having to install a new game plan, this is your time to to fix those fundamentals, if you will, or your things that you should be doing every day by nature that you haven't been, that you're not at um, half halfway. Uh, we're I guess we're a little more than halfway through the season. <clears throat> Less so looking at LSU because you got another week. And I, I'm sure he's got staffers and other coaches scouting, doing all that stuff, maybe looking at signals. Who knows? Um <laughs> But as far as the players, uh, what they're going through in practice, I think has nothing to do with LSU. More of how do we just become a better football team? How do we reduce the penalties? How do we get our steps right on these blocks? How do we get our steps right on press? Things that those small things that maybe they aren't um, doing as well as they should have. All right. Would you take the same approach, Derek? Just look back at ourselves and try to figure out what's better for Bama football? Or do you go ahead a little bit? Well, what I would do is definitely scrap the stuff that we didn't do well and find out what we did well 
and kind of perfect it a little more during this upcoming week. I think they will in- implement some things uh, that they'll see from LSU offensively and defensively. And, you know, just kind of put in a, a, a small, a third of the game plan for the LSU week. So when they hit the ground running uh, Monday, first practice, they already have a foundation of what they're going to do uh, during the LSU week preparation. And then they'll install the rest of the, 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 the two thirds of the other plays. Yep, and I, and I would um, concur with both of them. I think that you're probably getting a lot of rest and recovery that, you know, it's a long season. It's a grind. These guys are playing 13, 14, 15, <laughs> a lot of football games. They're playing an NFL season, and you really got to put those guys back together. So, classic headed. I bet there's a lot of training room. You know, there is some film study uh, on the past, maybe a little bit of how to get better. Um, afterwards, but it's really trying to make corrections on um, how we um, might not have played the best from a player standpoint. And then the coaches are really trying to figure out, okay, what are the best plays um, we got? Okay. So we well, got a couple minutes before, before we get in, into Tennessee, we got a couple viewer questions. <clears throat> First one being, it seems that after a bye week a quote, November warrior emerges, some we don't expect. Who would be candidates for this team? So who who do you think might may step up and take on a bigger role going forward after this bye week? Uh, or just play better. Maybe just turn into a guy that we haven't seen all year. Well, you know, one of the things we talked about, and he's playing well already, and it really depends on his health. I'm very interested to see how uh, Terry on Arnold actually ends up playing because I think it's going to be um, – critical to the success of our defense um, in the passing game. The passing game, is just, I know you got to stop the run and all that kind of stuff, and I think we're doing a whole lot better there. But with the, with the amount of uh, man-to-man uh, we're playing out on the edges, uh, we really need him to be uh, the guy that he has been, and I'd like to be able to see him get his hands on the football a little bit more. We'll be able to talk about some technique stuff on that. Don't forget about those things, people. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because we do break down films where you can see the drops on Fridays and Mondays, typically on some technique or some schemes. Um, so I'm going with uh, – I want to watch him, you know. I want to watch number three and see what's happening there. What about you guys? I'm going to watch number 30. What's the name? Jaheen Campbell? Is that – Jaheen Campbell? 30? Yeah. Yeah, I think he's been – on and he's he's been playing some good football, so I'm interested in seeing how he he progresses the next last part of the season. I think he's going to be a, a key to to the defense playing sound. Okay. okay. Next question, <clears throat> Derek George and JT. How will Tommy Reese's game plan against Brian Kelly, especially with Kelly knowing his tendencies? Uh, well, first I want to give another shout out to the Bama Standard. Uh, and Justin and the gang for uh, joining forces with us. We do appreciate it, man. You guys do a great job. Make sure you guys are tuning in to what they do. They're on Tuesday night, 6 p.m. Uh, Central Time. Uh, do a fabulous job giving you all the insight. They're they're you know insiders. They're they they got good knowledge. Um, so make sure that you guys give them a a follow and a shout. Um, you know, as much as you can, because uh, we love being guests on the show. They're hilarious, um, <laughs> but they give you everything that you need to know. So the question being with Tom Marie's game plan against Brian Kelly, especially with Kelly knowing his tendencies, you know what? Uh, it, it's the, kind of the same thing I asked about the Cowboys when Kelly Moore left uh, and went to the Chargers. You know, he'd been with the Cowboys all this time. And you figure out, hey, what do you do? What do you got to do? And I did actually have the opportunity to speak to some people um, about what do you do as coaches when you know someone just left your program, a player, a coach. They know what your tendencies are, what you try to do. Um, and the answer is you do what you got to do that you got to win the game. You know they're going to have it, but you got to add some wrinkles. If they're thinking about this, you got to have some what ifs. They're going to line up against us like this because they know that we're going to do this, so we need to have a counter. Derek Lassett was just talking about boxing and all this kind of stuff. 
taekwondo. They study enough film. They know what you're going to do or what your likes are. But you got to be smart enough as a coach to add something else to that. And that's the progression that I've actually seen with Tommy Reese. And that's the part we're going to get to this film when you start seeing his running plays and things that he's doing. There's been a gradual progression. Um, so um, there it is. What Kelly, what Kelly up to? What's she saying, JT? Yep. Kelly Weathersby with a super chat. She says, now that Milro is somewhat settled in his role as QB1, what kind of game plan do you foresee Reese implementing for him? Mm. Derek, you got any ideas? I, I mean, I hope it's I hope it's more QB run. Well, I want to answer, uh, piggyback on that last okay. little question. He made his tendencies, but it's not like he bought his offense to Alabama. Right? Mm-hmm. So he he's running Alabama system. So it's not like Coach O'Brien has an advantage there. You know, he he had to learn Alabama's system. Um, and what was the other question? The other question from Kelly Weathersby. Now that Moreau is somewhat settled in his role as QB1, what kind of game plan do you foresee Rees implementing for him? Well, we know he, throw, we know he throws the, the, the long ball good, right? So I need, I, they need to watch some of Baltimore Ravens' offense and, and piggyback off of some of the stuff that they do. Mm-hmm. I, I was watching having Lamar uh, Jackson roll left or right and have a tailback or a tight end in the flats. You know, and if they take that away, then he can go deep. Or if they take the deep ball away, throw it to the guy underneath, and then you still have the option to run. They need to implement something like that in, in their system because he's too good of an athlete to be stuck in the pocket. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. They roll him. And that will help the offensive line. If you got a weak offensive line, how do you help him? Roll the quarterback. I agree. And thank you, Kelly, for uh, the super chat and uh, contribution to the – the program. I do want to say I think that um, if if you watch it, and I don't have this on the film, I need to go back and get it, JT. But there were some very unique runs that they put in with Jalen Milro. I put the the run and play with the running back on it. Um, but if you go back and watch this Tennessee game, you see these. They're like they're like outside leads. It looked like a sweep. Um, with Jalen Monroe, he ran down the goal line the first time where they, you know, now offenses are going both directions and the quarterback's going out one way. And they did a really, really good job with that. So I think that you're going to see Jalen Miro use his legs a little bit more. JT and I actually pointed out to everyone a little while ago, a couple of shows ago, where we were, we thought a play was going to be a quarterback counter. You remember JT and he handed it all. Yep, that's when we had Bo on. Yeah, and then the next week they actually ran the quarterback counter. He didn't read it. He didn't run it correctly. He actually didn't keep it inside. He actually went outside. I did look at that. Um, so, and then now I think that they're going to be working on, hey, follow your pullers, stay inside. And this is what I'm really interested in talking to Le- uh, Derek about of, Angles when you're running plays. When you, what's the difference between a tra- trap, a counter, all the things that me and JT have kind of tried to highlight with you guys. But as a running back, what are they really looking at? And when do they know when they need to bounce outside of a puller and stay behind the puller? Um, and so when you got a running quarterback, um, you'll see that it becomes tougher um, to do. JT's giving you a little bit of tease here. Oh, um, I, th- I thought you set me up this time because I missed it the last time. <laughs> I thought, oh, my bad. I, no, well. I think it's great because this is probably the point where you need to go ahead and tell the folks uh, that are on the – Yeah, they're, they're listening to this recorded, which to recorded. I've done a terrible job at posting these. So um, terribly sorry for you podcast folks. That's why you should be here on YouTube, because uh, I don't forget to go to YouTube, but I do forget to post it. So if you are listening to this on the recorded uh, portion after the show in your favorite podcast catcher, whether that's Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Overcast, wherever, um, the, we're, we're about to get into some film. So um, make sure that you, you come find us, live.teagsteak.com. It'll drop you right into our latest video. You can catch us. Um, about 35 minutes in. So 
We'll see you next time if you are listening to the Recorder Podcast. If you are not, you're still here, then uh, we're going to break down some film. Maybe draw on the screen a little bit, provided my iPad's working. Yep. All right. Well, good. Okay. So while he's getting himself set up, thank you guys for that. Um, um, this is this is the part where we start getting to this film. So um, JT, the technical one, analytical one, all this stuff, kind of stuff you may be able to draw up on here. But I want you to look at this. And th this is where I want – uh, let me set it up for you guys a little bit, right? So we've been talking a lot about what a counter looks like, what a trap looks like. Traps typically have one puller kicking out somebody. Typically, the running back is uh, staying behind the puller. Counters typically have two pullers, right? That doesn't necessarily mean both linemen. It could be a tight end and a guard, a tackle and a tight end, a tackle and a guard. Um, uh, there, there's a bunch of different ways to do that. And so when I saw this one, fellas, uh, this was different for me. So what I want you guys to look at is the left guard, right? First yep. of all. Uh -oh. Yeah, that, that would be fine too, because that's the other guy that I want you to see is um, Oates, the fullback, tied in kind of thing. And it's very it's different. Because they're opposite of each other. I want your eyes to go to what I'm gonna call the tight end. Should we call it, we can call him a tight end, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if you guys agree with that. Sure. So when we start the play, I want you to see what his motion is and what he does. All right. So they take your roll the clip. So he actually goes left when the puller is going right. And then he turns up into the hole. Now, there's a lot of stuff that you can look at the wide receiver. We'll get into what Milrow is supposed to do. JT and I kind of talked about this a little bit later. They're setting up an option to come out the backside of this, which I think is going to be fabulous if they actually do it. Um, but so they got the puller coming from left to right. And then the, is this a lead blocker? Is this a puller? What are we saying? I'm going to start with Derek. First, what what do you think this guy is? Is he a puller me, or a lead blocker? To me, he's a, to me, he's a lead blocker. Old school, the quarterback would be underneath center. The fullback would be in front of in front of me behind the quarterback. So new age, they have us. He's in a shotgun, so he's just lead blocking. He's leading up into the hole. Now my eyes are going to first look at the line of scrimmage to determine what it what what it. What, what front they're in, it's 4-3-3-4. Three, three, so I have an idea on where the lineman's going to block the guy and where he's going to kick him out at. I'll peek over here to the right to check out, you know, where this left guard is going to come and the man he's going to kick out because I know I'm coming backside. I know I can either get on his hip or I can follow the fullback into the hole. So it depends on what breaks, what happens. Okay, and, and that's excellent. So, so this this guard, so get in there a little bit more. The guard is essentially responsible for this uh, backer standing down. Which there. guard are we talking about? We're talking about left guard or right guard? The left guard is basically responsible for the in man on the line of scrimmage on the S. Correct? Oh. Yeah. Other way. Other way. Yeah. He's actually responsible Pull for, for him. Right. That's his yep. pull. He's actually yeah. coming for him. Everybody else is blocking down. Down. Now, our right tackle, and this might be hard for you to see, and this is why I'm trying to figure out if it's a power play or – all right, so we're not linemen here, right? But if you were sitting here with a lineman coach, and I've been a head football coach for a long time, and I studied a lot of this and going to the film. So the differences between the power – and just a counter is that our right guard and our right tackle, so they're going to double up on the uh, one technique, essentially. Um, and they're going to go to the backside linebacker. Y'all stay with me here if y'all can, okay? It's kind of hard for us to try to draw on the screen. Backside linebacker is standing in the middle of the A, basically. Right? <clears throat> so... They got a choice to go there or even further back. 
and that's why I was saying I'm trying. I don't know if they made a mistake or if they're trying to go. You know, and there's another guy coming into the box because we're running motion that way. I think it's a better play, actually, guys. If he don't even come, yeah. If he doesn't have the motion, because you're you're actually going to take this guy and either drag him this way, or there's a safety that's sitting right here. You can see a shadow that might be coming down like this. That's right. So they're actually bringing another guy in the box, but we'll we'll get to that part later. So, and this is why, and I, I love what um, Lassic is saying, right? So because typically when you see a power, the power is taking the fullback on the defensive end, which will be the guy on. S, but our guard is going to him. So I'm really confused on what this is. I like what he's saying. I just don't know how to – I think it works perfectly and it's working fine. I just don't know what you call it. You know, is it a power or a counter? All right, so we'll get JT's take on it too. I'll let him run it again so that you guys can see everything that we're talking about. Look at the interior lineman, why he's doing this when he runs it. Go ahead and run it. You can run the. You can see the right guard and the right tackle. <clears throat> Double up. He comes off really fast to the linebacker. <laughs> to me, more of a power because I'm watching the running back's foot, and he takes a drop step. If it's a counter, oh. he's going to, you know, shuffle to one side and go to the other. So oh. watch the runner takes a drop step. Boom. That's so, that's yeah. interesting. So. Um... Yeah. Counters are I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to switch the color for chat. Uh, red is uh, apparently not working, so I'm going to try blue. Chat, let me know. Uh, so what we're looking at right here is this guy, and we're looking at his foot. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what he's saying that, is, right? I'm I'm going to try really hard to stop it. There it is. Ah, oh, damn it. That's all right. Go ahead, run it back. You can get it. Yeah, so he sees that drop step. And you're saying when he takes the drop step, that it's means – It's a power play. Power, that that right but, there. Right, because now he's I'm going he's going straight downhill. You're not getting this action, right? Yeah, because on the counter, you're going to counter and shuffle so you give the offensive lineman, as you said, two pullers, the opportunity to pull. And then you can get up behind them. So that's why your footwork would be different. So he would have countered to the right. He would have step, step, and then plan it and then came back right if it was a counter. Step, step, step left, and then come back right for a counter. He here he's just taking a drop step. So to me, that's a power play. So this is interesting to me, right? And I don't know that I'm giving Tom and Reese the credit for this. Okay. And maybe we need to be thinking different. And that's what I want to ask you. You know, how you guys feel about this Nick Saban's he drawn it? Because this is – would y'all agree this is different? I don't know if y'all seen anything like this. I've never really seen anything like this. Yeah, we um, haven't run it in a couple – I haven't seen it in the past couple of years. Yeah, so I think this is different. So someone had to be sitting here saying, okay, we got to give this kind of look. How do we make it look a little bit different? Because who who does this really mess up? Because I'm, I'm looking at the – tight end and I'm going what how did he even come up with that what is it who's it really fooling what is it are you thinking are they doing this because of all of the uh, behind the line so typically when they take off this way 45 will be going over to take the other defensive end. yeah maybe, maybe what you got um, is you're thinking you're getting this motion yes and you're going to get this backer flying out to mm -hmm. take it. Yeah. Maybe. Cause because this is this route is hard, right? If you're gonna if you're gonna sneak him out of the back. Mm -hmm. yes. While you also got this guy coming this way, maybe what they're trying to do is get these linebackers' eyes to say, hey, I gotta get out here to the flat right now. And then that's when you hit him with the uh this pull. He's faking. He's coming up here, and then shh, it's a lot of lines. But yeah, okay. Well, the only if you're getting rid of those, if you just the safety just following our guy, if you can circle him, he's the one who actually ends up making the tackle. And that's why I say it probably would have been better if you don't. So there's two more steps in this, right? Um, Y'all know who I'm talking about. The guy that's 
just outside the hash mark on the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one right here. He, he follows the motion. Yes. So he follows the motion in. So we're going to run it one time. And I need y'all to keep your eye on him because we don't have anybody to block him, right? Because of the motion. So go ahead and let it run, JT. You can see that he's scot free, right? So he gets in on the the tackle. Okay, now stop it right here. Now I want you, and this is the last piece of the play that I think this is very interesting. The motion by the slot receiver, he actually pivots. Yeah, he's about to, to go, go back. back. Oh, this looks like speed option, coach. Yes, sir. You see what I'm talking about, baby? This is some good shit. And this is why I'm talking about where we don't really get to see this because now what we're talking about, and they actually the defensive end. So at the top. So middle and the wide receiver about to come back out the backside, mm -hmm. which would ultimately only leave that one defensive back out there. Everybody else is blocked. Clear He's enough. already down in there on the line. This, this could be a huge ass play. And so yeah. I don't know if y'all if I if I made that clear to everybody, but that's what this is the progressions that I'm talking about that they're putting in that it's it's not a huge play. You know, he gets whatever it is, four or five yards or whatever, but piece that comes off of it now. A coordinator, JT is a defensive coordinator. If he's looking at this, he's gotta be saying, Oh yeah, I'm telling my aunt, like, yo, man. And and I'm also I'm also talking to the safety too. Like, hey man, you are cut back boot reverse. So if this thing leaks out the back, defensive end, you got the quarterback. You this, this dude that ends up making the tackle on the hash. You know, this where's my pointer at? This guy. I'm telling him, hey, you got pitch man. Cause if yeah, you don't, yeah. This is this is going for uh this is going for 53 yards for a touchdown. Right. See, and so okay. and that, that's why this play is intriguing to me. I know we led up on the is it a counter, is it a power and all this, but this is the stuff when we say get ready Peter because they're going to be watching. Now, Miro, look at that fake Miro does. That's a bullshit ass fake. We talked about this last week. Yeah. He he, he can't he can't do that. He just can't stand that. Hey, it's Coach Stark. Say, hey, if you want to watch the game, buy a ticket. Yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah, you go, you can go sit in the stands like everybody else, or you can or you can just uh, you can get on Michigan staff. Yeah, I know, I know right. receivers aren't the greatest at blocking, but they can also have this that receiver that's coming back come down and block this guy and and have mill rolls out to the to the races. It's, that'll be a hard pitch going to the left. I would think. So I'd much rather have the the, the the wide receiver block that in and keep the ball in Milrow's hands. Mm -hmm. JT got some old fancy stuff. What you doing? Uh, I'm trying to keep I, I keep moving my I keep moving my iPad and the stuff gets keeps changing. I'm trying to fix it. My bad. Very unprofessional. Okay. Um but either way, very intriguing. I think continue to watch this and look this and see what happens whether they i mean there's so many different things you can do just think about how people run the option shoot they he um jayla miro can flip his head out to the bottom side honestly um that's what option teams do, those reverse options i don't know what it's called um but the dive back goes one way this is a triple option mm -hmm. so when we're asking hey what are we going to see that you someone from the chat asks, I think this is what you're going to see. You're going to see stuff like this, just adding a little bit and can't put it all in because it takes a lot of time um, last week to try to figure out spacing and when you pitch it on and who's on the same page. Um, mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, it does. Uh, Especially if you're not, okay. used to, you're not used to running an option. So to me, I would I would eliminate one and have this guy become the blocker. Or you can throw it to the receiver and have the receiver throw the ball to this receiver at the top if you wanted to get fancy dancy with it. Oh, that, that, I, th know. I think that's a little too that's a little too fancy now. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's that's the national much. championship game. That's yeah. national championship. You got to take a little bit of time. Bro. But you you give the defense a lot of things to look at. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm, for for so real. That's what you want to do. Make as a coordinator, you have to look at every little thing. All right. Well, we didn't dove into that one enough. Uh, thank you guys for paying attention to this. We're gonna, I want to go to the next play because um, I want to hear Lassie's take on uh, blocking a little bit. Uh, um, this one, if I can set this up to you, this is a pass. This is the very first big completion that, you know, well, really the only complete, <laughs> the only uh, explosive play that we might first half actually so it is a pass play um it's a double end yep, we'll get in that a little bit that just means the, the receivers at the top of on it in routes um and so uh, what i want to think about is on the first thing that i want to concentrate on is a run again protection we hit on this with Bo jack uh Bo scar um a couple weeks ago, or whenever it was, about pass and what that looks like. So, running back this time has pass protection. I uh, think we call this a slide protection. We'll have Lassick tell us if we well, all the linemen are going to look going left, and the running back is going to step right. We actually got a blitzing safety who's ten away from the line of scrimmage, and that mm-hmm. is going to be running back's game. Now he whiffs. Um, you know, that I want lasted to kind of, you know, how they practice on this stuff. What what well, kind of coaching can they give to him uh, on this play? Well, I'm gonna tell him make sure. I'm gonna say make sure inside out first of all. So make sure he doesn't blitz in between that guard, that right guard and right tackle. All right. So you want to protect inside out. So once run the play, once he comes to the outside, the running back gets too close to the tackle. You see his leg? It hits the back of the tackle's leg, which throws the tackle off balance, which throws the running back off balance. So that's two no-nos. I said, look, don't get too close to the tackle where you now you have no leverage, no power, because his leg is hitting your leg and you're off balance. But thank God he's forcing him outside, so it gave the quarterback enough time to make the play. But first of all, he, he has to maintain distance from that tackle so he doesn't interrupt the tackle while he's engaged in his block. That's his first mistake. No. That, that's point. I didn't really think about them crossing that and um, to his balance, which caused them to lose the balance, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, what is he looking back if Jay back right now? When you're, what is a quarterback or you know how you how is he and who he's supposed to be looking at this point in time? Um, I know you don't know what the pass protection is, but is this obvious and, hey, I got to take this put safety or something? But what are his eyes? What is he going on? 90% of the time, we're going to have the safety. We're going to be responsible for a safety if he blitz the back. So we're first going to look at that safety. If he drops, then we know we can go into our pass route. You know, if, if not, when we go into our pass route, we want to chip if the route uh, uh, permits it. We want to chip that defensive end to kind of help the offensive lineman. Once we recognize mm-hmm. the blitz, we got to sit in there and be solid. Um, as Coach would say, you know, hit him, hit him in the chest, and you want to catch him in the traffic. Chest and tra- traffic. So we want to catch him in the line of scrimmage, you know, where he doesn't have a lot of speed and leverage. See, I don't like – I never like to wait for the blitzer to come. I like to meet him up in the mush with offensive linemen are where he's trying to avoid the lineman to get there, and that kind of slows him down and he loses some speed and, and strength. And I can catch him in a hole in that mush. Because if he gets past that line of scrimmage and you're catching, he's, you're catching him three, four yards in, in the backfield, chances are he's going to run you over. You know, unless you're mm-hmm. hee-haw, unless you're Martin Houston, <laughs> where, you're <built> low, <laughs> where you're built low to the ground and you're powerful is all outdoors. You know, Martin was the only guy I know could get away with something like that. But a small back like me, I played at 195 pounds. So them 230-pound linemen, linebackers and line, and a 220-pound safety coming from 15 yards, you, you got to get low, stay low. Okay. All right. JT, you need to add anything about that? I don't know how much blitz pickup you when you were – playing uh it wasn't it wasn't this elaborate i mean I, I don't think i've ever had to pick up a blitzing safety it was usually an outside linebacker an inside linebacker um high school level safeties don't blitz that often 
Yep. Not, not 100% agree. Okay. So all of if you look at the timing of it, you no, know, uh, we'll get into how Miro actually handled that piece in a minute, because I want us to talk about the, the receivers at the top double in. So this is a, a deeper throw. We know that we did ever better at the deeper throws. But this greater throw where they said he normally couldn't hit it. Double ends create some issue for uh, secondary a little bit. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you're in zone or man, right? Because you're trying to find areas. Um, so there are windows that the quarterback looks at. The, the slot guy at the top is trying to get inside, maybe draw a linebacker inside. Then the outside guy is basically, yeah, um, following him. JT's drawing the, on the uh, right now, and they're both going to come back inside uh, in those windows. And Miro has to do a really good job with with the I give him some praise a little bit because when JT starts to roll this um, film, then you get the releases of the wide receivers. We also got to look at what Jay actually his eyes. I think this is play so go ahead and hit the play um so stop you see Miro in the middle field at the safety uh when you go a little bit later he's actually looking right and then he comes all the way back to the left so really he got guys that, there's three guys that are open <laughs> right yeah the guy in the flat the flat is at the 30 yard line, tight end. Uh-huh. Both the throws are right in the middle of the field. They got the bottom of the circle at the 45. That's an easy throw. And Lord, what do, what do you want to do? But before you go any further, just look at what the lineman did in the pocket. So this is where we got to say, okay. Is this a good thing about a quarterback standing in the pocket? I would say yes. Would y'all agree with that or no? He's got people around his legs. We just talked about the guy that kind of missed him, lineman. That that's kind of hard to do. Imagine. I don't know if I could have stood in there and not start trying to step up. Yeah, I mean this this is this shows a little bit of growth, right? Sitting in there and then trying to uh, trying to actually make a throw because I think early in the year he would have already try to spin out and and break the pocket, right? And then hold on to the ball, probably take a sack because not throwing the ball away. Um, but I think this is this is very good being able to handle the chaos around you, feel protected by your alignment and just sit in here, go through your progression. Yeah. What do you think lasted before he starts to play anymore? Well I, um, I think good. I, I wouldn't have mind if he would have stepped up. I start coming up to have this linebacker come forward a little bit and give, give him a little more space to hit that middle receiver. Mm-hmm. But it does show he he has trust and, and confidence in his offensive line. Okay. Uh, and then if you let it go, if you look at the release, this is a tight, it's on point. There's nothing. I mean, it's, it's a dynamic pass. Um, to what's up, Monica? Glad you're here. Um, so that that is a I just think it's a good play all around. We'll let it run. You can let it run all the way through. You know, you can check out the running back. He kind of will uh then moves to the left a little bit. That's a a big ass play. And I'm with you. I don't think he throws this in week two at all. I'm thinking he's already running. Yep, <laughs> you know, the week is not even, and he's probably not even throwing it away. He's just gonna take it. Um, so I think that uh, a positive that we can look forward to, and if he can do things like this consistently, and you know those other things, what we just showed you, right? He's pulling the ball, running speed options, doing these things. This is dangerous. I mean, last thing you put a, the best point out there, talk, look at some Lamar Jackson film 
you know, and see what he's doing. This is good stuff. Two guys in the sophomore, right? He's only sophomore. He got a lot of time left, I think. Um, yeah, he's got two uh, on paper. I would have liked to have seen him hit number 17, though, because I, I, he's so explosive. And, and, and when he gets the ball, he, like he said, he says he's the fastest on the team. I'd like to see him in Milro race. Milro is the fastest guy on the team. I don't know what they're talking but about. But the 17 Bond said he's the fastest on the team, so I want to see them race. <laughs> well, whatever, Bond. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Whatever. I, I just look like. So there it is, man. Those are some great um, things uh, for you. I think uh, Lassett gave us all some some really good points, mm-hmm. particularly on the footwork on the counter. It's an amazing job. Uh, and that's why I'm very thankful that he was able to come on and spend some time with us. I need to say thank you again to the Bama Standard um, and all of the viewers of the Bama Standard for coming on and, and some, some time with us. All the team thurs uh, that you guys get some follows to the Bama Standard show on Tuesday in Central Time. Um, it's uh, it, uh, It's amazing. So I think we come to each other. That's a great thing to do. Big shout out, Lassie. You are the man. You are the MVP. You're a champion. You don't wear it. You don't, you don't talk about it enough. I, I played nine years and I ain't got no rings. You got yours your first year. Yeah. Got in, doing your thing, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. doing your big I was, stuff. So. I was blessed. I, I don't know if I'd rather have nine years of the Super Bowl ring, but I was blessed. And I know I was the third player in NFL history to win a national championship in the Super Bowl in consecutive years. There have been plenty of players who have done it since. I think there's like 10 or 11 now. But I was the third player, so I'm in the NFL record books. You know, can't take yeah. that away from me. Yeah. I didn't play it's long. Yeah. And yeah. I would I would like to look at those stats to see how many of those guys after you are actually from Alabama that actually. There's, there's a few from Alabama. <laughs> uh-huh. There's the um, Dante Hightower. Mm-hmm. I think I know he's a player. Whoever went to uh, um, uh, New England from Alabama, and then there was I think Baltimore won the Super Bowl, and we had a couple of players on their team back when Ray Lewis was playing. So I won a national championship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but don't forget to send well, me that with that information. I got you. I will send that to you because I need to turn in my sheet and start making this money too. Uh, they're doing an upshot, he says. John Davis, thank you guys for tuning in. But again, we appreciate this uh, time. This is the time we need to get our little uh, exit jam. They say you ain't got to go home, but you got to get up out of here, man, because tea takes is about to be over. So we want to make sure that you guys hit that on subscribe button, the like button. Find us on Twitter. Oh, you find us. Hey, Man, brother, I see you standing over there going back to the day. It's the big one, baby. It's the big one. And it's going to be a bigger one next. It was 8.15. Y'all come find us. All right? We're going to have another former player on. Talking about some lines coming. Y'all get with us. I'm saying this. Y'all get with us.